the stress, the bigger the movements and the feedback in the body needs to be. Yeah. You know, you've probably tried it. You probably thought, oh, I'm really stressed. I'm just going to go and do a yoga need. I'm just going to go lie down. And you lie down and it's like, it's not happening. Yeah, mind is just off. And you, after about 10 minutes, you sort of say, okay, I'm nice and warm. I give up, but I'm not going to relax. And that's because we haven't given the we haven't given the body the feedback it needs first. If we're nice and relaxed, lying down and relaxing is easy. <laughs> if we're not, we need, and the word I'm looking for is embodiment. Yeah? If we're not embodied, relaxing becomes difficult. So this next technique is quite a full on, um, I'm gonna sit down for this one just because I want to access my feet. This is what we call pressure. So, you know, we do a version of this in um, uh, one of our yoga for and relaxations using bean bags, weighted bean bags, but you can do it to yourself. So I've got my thumbs and I'm just pressing, pressing quite hard, as hard as I want, up from the heel, towards my ball of the foot and then onto my toes. And I'm just gonna do that a few times. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Now, when you first start doing this, hands can get a little bit tired quite quickly. But just so you know, we're not going to use our hands um, all the time. So they will get a break. So three or four times, big pressure, and you can sort of finish by bringing the hands to the to the reflex point, not just the balls of the feet, and really pushing down and squeezing the feet. And then we've got pressure up from the heel. So stitching, we call it. So it's like you're creating little stitches up. Up. So sometimes when we do this, we rub. We can rub as well, of course. You can do whatever you like, but a bit pressure is the thing. So I'm stitching, 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 stitching. I don't know if you can see that that well, but hopefully you can. Okay, having done that, we can turn and I'm going to press now with my hands, doing sort of this action. I'm going to press my thighs and, it, and if you roll the muscle a little bit it's a bit more effective remember it's not so much a massage that we're trying to give but feedback like can you feel the muscle and however you do that doesn't matter as long as there's a bit of pressure and then we're going to come up the back you see, a bit harder, these muscles can be rock hard, so pressing the muscles, the hamstrings here at the top can be quite difficult. And then we can switch to the thighs and just roll the muscle a little bit through the hands and you're really waking it up. And then we can apply pressure ourselves. So using the heel of the hand just a bit above the knee, we're gonna press down towards the floor and slightly towards the feet. And take a breath. And then we're gonna bring that up to the top of the thigh. So if you think of the tip of the thigh muscle, bringing the hands there, we're gonna push down and towards the feet. Take a breath. Now this works really well if you're sitting. They're also really good grounding techniques for others as well. So if you've got madly excited children, <laughs> you know, and they need to calm down a little bit, this pressure stuff is really good for them. Okay, so the next one, I'm bringing my hands to my, the top of the pelvis. I've just changed position, you don't have to, but for me, you can see me a bit better hopefully up here. And I'm pressing the pelvis both down towards the coccyx and in towards each other. Take a breath. And 
And if you've ever heard of pelvic wrapping after pregnancy, this is sort of what it's like. Yeah, it's just encouraging the pelvis in. And then when you let go, you get that lovely uh, release feedback. So as you let go, you can just sort of feel it go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, good. Okay, we're gonna move on to the hands. So with the hands, I guess the easiest way to provide pressure for that is just to squeeze them. Give them a really good squeeze. And of course you can squeeze one and then the other if you wanna do a bit of bilateral stuff. Incidentally, in terms of bilateral um, stimulation, doing this, when you're talking to somebody and you're really stressed, it's, it's a difficult conversation, can keep you really level-headed because you're giving the left and right brain feedback that keeps them connected. It's nice and easy. Good, and then relax your hands. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna stand up just to get nearer to the camera because this one is a bit tricky to find. So we're gonna, you see that lovely round bit of muscle there on my, my forearm, yeah? We're gonna go into the elbow and I'm gonna work along the top of that round bit, pressing until I find this point that's slightly sore, yeah? So you might have to fiddle about for it, but it's there for sure. And when you find it, press it as hard as you want for about five seconds or, or until you feel a little pulse, either or. And then once you've done that, we're gonna go up to the arm here. There's a, there's a tear shaped muscle. The tip of the tear is about there. And again, if you press there, slightly sore. Really good these for, for various things these points are for releasing tension in the shoulder, tightness held in the neck, but also for immunity. So these are the, the things I did when I was lying in bed with COVID. I'd do these, I'd relax the whole arm and shoulder girdle, and then I'd fall asleep and wake up feeling a tiny bit better. Lovely. Okay, so let's do the other side. So we're bringing the arm up, finding this sore spot here. Just pressing. These are a bit more effective than actually rolling the muscles. It's really interesting. So you can massage yourself, of course, but actually doing these points is a little bit more effective for that release that we're looking for, that embodiment. Lovely. And then when you just angle the arms, you'll see that you, you can really feel a release there down the arms. It's a bit like a draining feeling, which is quite nice. Good. So we've got certain spots across the front of the body, sort of the chakra areas. Um, I find the best thing to do in terms of pressure is more isometric here. So rather than pressing really hard like we have done it's just holding so i've got you know depending on which ones you want to do easiest sort of here the womb area the solar plexus you decide and you just provide feedback the warmth of your hands a slight pressure and a breath Just a nice way to warm up, relaxing the stomach quite a lot as well. It's quite good for that. When we come up to the throat area, and this is at this point, I'm going to get rid of my beard because you won't be able to see me properly. <laughs> so I've got two points here, like the points that we press. But what's quite nice is if we join these dots with these dots that we had earlier in the throat. 
And you can sort of feel then the connection between the thymus gland and the thyroid. Again, it's not a huge amount of pressure on the throat, but it just, you can just feel something there. And when it starts to kind of pulse or it loosens its strength, then um, we stop. Oh, we get rid of that properly. I am on camera after all. <laughs> okay, we're going to come and bring our thumb underneath the chin, so just around the, the bone there, under the chin. And then the other finger is going to go in between the upper jaw and the lower jaw, and we're going to press there. Kind of relax as if you're going to dribble. Then it's quite nice to do it this way where you keep now the thumb in the jaw and you bring the finger across the eye socket. And as you sort of press along the eye socket, you'll find a little dip and a little sore spot. And you can sort of press jaw and eye socket together. And then we move the thumb to where that eye socket spot is. And we find this next spot, which is at the top of the brow. So the, the arch of your brow, go up a kind of centimetre or so into the forehead. And again, you'll find them. It's really nice. Take a breath. Again, swapping the thumb for the one that's there or the little finger will do actually. And you can measure this one really well. So I'm using my four fingers here and roughly where my fourth finger is on the hairline is another really nice spot for pressing. And then we're gonna go from there, so we bring the little finger maybe to there, measuring with our four other fingers and roughly where they meet. So where they're meeting in the crown of the head, in the centre there, roughly around there, so at the tip of the fontanelle is another really good spot. You can keep pressing the hairline and that spot at the same time. It's also very nice. Take a breath. Good, and then we're going to come round. I'll take my hat off for this one. At the nape of the neck, if you feel down one side of the nape, again, it's a tear-shaped muscle with the tip right at the nape on each side. Really nice muscle to press. It really relaxes all the way down the spine to the tail. And then if you want a bit more neck, bring all four fingers to the neck and roughly the middle finger will be in the right place for a neck point. Sort of a sore point there, take that nice little press. And then the final one, very tricky to do this one, but worth it. Show you a bit of shoulder. It's right in the middle of the mesotars here, roughly. Just in the middle. Always saw that spot. <laughs> Unless you have a resident massa. And then we can do, I quite like to do both. You just cross the hands, not so easy in this particular top, but yeah, in, in pajamas in bed, very easy. And then as you stop after that, just again, just check in and just see how it feels in your whole body. So again, it's another embodying technique. We're bringing ourselves to our bodies. We can say, oh, you know, after this, I could just easily lie down just for five minutes and have a little mini relaxation. 